Good morning, it is Dominic Steele. It's Thursday morning, the 8th of June. And uh, look, what a great night, the prayer and praise night at Village Church last night. And praise God for Alvin Wong and the whole crew who made that happen. It was just so exciting to, to turn up there and just be encouraged to adore God and uh, to recognise him as holy and powerful and mighty and blessed be the name of the Lord. Just great. Now, Isaiah chapter 44 and this passage about Cyrus. And um, I must say... When I read this passage, I cannot but remember an evangelistic talk by Philip Jensen at Macquarie University years and years ago <laughs> that was all about God raising up a Messiah and talking about this passage and, and then talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so anyway, there's where my head goes. So it's been good for me to discover it in its context. And uh, we're picking up uh, right at the end of the chapter. And uh, wow, it just kind of out of left field it feels that um, this announcement uh, from God about Cyrus this is what the Lord your Redeemer who formed you in the womb says I am the Lord who made everything who stretched out the heavens by myself who alone spread out the earth who destroys the omens of the false prophets who makes fools of diviners who confounds the wise who makes their knowledge foolishness who confirms the message of his servant who fulfills the counsel of his messengers and says to Jerusalem, she will be inhabited and to the cities of Judah, they will be rebuilt. I will restore her ruins and who says to the depths of the sea, be dry and I'll dry up the rivers. Who says to Cyrus, my shepherd, he will fulfill all my pleasure and says to Jerusalem, she will be rebuilt and of the temple, its foundation will be laid. Now, and that's the end of chapter 44. Listen to 45. The Lord says this to Cyrus, his anointed, whose right hand I've grasped to subdue nations before him, to disarm kings and open doors before him, and even city gates will not be shut. I will go before you and level the uneven places. I'll shatter the bronze doors. I'll cut the iron bars in two. I'll give you the treasures of darkness and riches from secret places so that you may know that I am the Lord. I am the God of Israel who calls you by your name. I call you by your name for the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen one. I give a name to you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord. There is no other. There's no God but me. I will strengthen you, though you do not know me. Now, that is fascinating. Just picking up on a couple of lines from Barry Webb's commentary. Cyrus, he says, really, this passage about Cyrus, it bursts on us. Uh, and it's, it's quite surprising, shocking at this point. Now, it's not that as if Cyrus is unknown to us. We met him as the one from the east who the Lord stirred up in 41.2. The surprise is that he should be spoken of as the Lord's shepherd and as his anointed directly after a passage in which idolatry has been so comprehensively condemned for Cyrus was a pagan idolater. Now, Webb notes that that helps us see that sometimes, well, often actually, God is able to use people without approving of all aspects of their character. And um, God does disapprove of idolatry, but does use an idolater for a good purpose here. And uh, actually, when you think, oh, that's interesting, because again and again, that happens today. God uses somebody without approving all aspects of their character. What I thought was interesting about um, 45 and picking up a couple of the ideas in 45, it'll be accomplished, the mission of Cyrus will be accomplished by God's help. That was really clear in the first three verses. It'll be accomplished in verse 4 for God's people and it'll be accomplished in verse 6 so that all people, including Cyrus himself, might know that the Lord alone is God. And so Barry Webb says, in short, God was going to use Cyrus to put his people back in Jerusalem so that from there, the place he had chosen, that might be the centre of his kingdom on earth and the truth about him might become known everywhere. In the longer plan, of course, um, it was to Jerusalem that Israel's true Messiah, the son of David, eventually came to fulfil his mission. And so it was from there 
that the gospel went out to the whole earth. So um, at that point, Cyrus is a temporary Messiah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glimpse of this Messiah Cyrus who would rescue your people under your hand so that your name might be known and ring out to the earth. And we thank you for the, um, the hint, the, uh, the pointer to the greater fulfilment of the true Messiah Jesus who will come and redeem the world. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks for joining us, Daily Bible Time, this Thursday morning. See you tomorrow morning. God bless.